My name is Lori Topp, this is my husband John. John was diagnosed in January of 2006 with oligodendroglioma. Never really been sick in my life, never been to the doctor, don't go, what did I do wrong? You know, where did I go? What did I, you know, do to, to bring this on? And, you know, then when it starts to sink in, you know, is this, here we go, is this really gonna be the end? You know, I really, yeah, you know, just got a few days to, a few days, months, weeks, whatever, and. We first heard the news that it was a brain tumor and, and I thought that life as we knew it was forever altered. I still gotta be a dad, yeah, I still gotta be a husband. <laughs> I still wanna be a dad, <laughs> I wanna be a husband. Changed everything and changed nothing. Nothing from December 30th forward has ever been the same as it was before. Every morning I say a prayer and thanking God for being alive. So, didn't do that before. Something guided me to Swedish and guided our family to Dr. Foltz and I, I really feel that's one of the reasons that John is sitting here with us today. The campaign for Swedish has helped us to develop significant improvements in the programs the Swedish Heart and Vascular Institute. Things such as the Advanced Heart Failure Program, the Diagnostic Center, and 3D Ultrasound, which helps us to three-dimensionally reconstruct the heart. These programs have allowed us to help patients and better serve our community in ways that we've never been able to do before, and we are very appreciative of that. One of the things that um, the Campaign for Swedish has allowed us to do is pilot a program called TAVAR. This is a procedure which in the past had to be done with open heart surgery, but currently now is being done with minimally invasive techniques in patients who were not candidate for open heart surgery. We're now able to save their lives. Without the contributions, it would have been impossible to help these patients. We do need your support. We need your continued support and your help in advancing the cause of taking care of our patients in our community. Thanks again. I'm not a person who's afraid of new things. If I, something's wrong with me, I want it fixed. I had a heart murmur, and I got weaker and weaker, and, and just was feeling terrible. The really good news for people who cannot survive open heart surgery is that this gives them a tremendous uh, opportunity uh, or, or alternative to go forward and, be, and, and have their valve repaired. We're talking about inoperable patients who uh, otherwise would not have a choice of life. Very happy to find out that they can do it, in fact. Before, I couldn't hardly walk. I mean, I was down most of the time. And now I feel great. I'll take whatever time I can get, you know, to be with my family and watch my great-grandchildren grow up. Well, there are times that I forget that I'm 88. I really do. majority of the time that a patient is in the hospital, they spend with nursing staff. The physicians come and go, and the nurses are there hour after hour after hour after hour. It takes vigilance every hour of every day that they're here, where we keep people safe. Physicians traditionally graduate from medical school, get a license as a physician, and then go through a residency program. Nursing has not had anything that is formalized or standardized across the country the same way that medicine has. 
I know from first-hand experience that this RN residency program leads to better outcomes for patients. When I first graduated from nursing school, I had heard that Swedish had a new RN residency program. I was hired with 40 other new nurses of all ages, and we were part of this cohort where we learned from our mentors. Our goal is to bring these novice nurses in and to have them work in place with our senior staff so that the wisdom of our senior staff can be shared with these novice nurses. I was able to pick up what they were doing and I was able to see firsthand um, what quality care looks like. We really need the support of our donor community to help us move forward to provide the high level quality nurses that our organization and this community needs. Gifts from the community will allow this program to expand to all campuses of Swedish and it will allow every new RN that's coming on board to get the same training that I received. I'm Linda and I work in the NICU at Swedish Hospital where we take care of little tiny babies. We try to give them the best start we can when they're first born. We have doctors and nurse practitioners 24 hours a day. So when babies are born early at say 24 weeks and up, there's somebody here, a team of people that can take care of them right from the very beginning. Well, Grace here was born at uh, 26 weeks and she's doing quite well. She's 42 days old now. When she came in here, it's like a miracle happened <laughs> because she was very, very small. She was 1.38 pounds. And then they brought her up here and then I remember how everybody just swooped over, took charge and just did everything they could. And they truly worked together as a team. Everybody had a role, everybody knew what they were doing and everybody had the same interest in mind, which was the patient. Parents feel good when they have their babies here. I have them tell me a lot of times, I'm so glad my baby's here. I feel really comfortable. I'm confident in the care they're giving. And this then allows them to go home because they can't spend 24 hours a day here. And if they can go home feeling comfortable and feeling like their baby is in good hands, then I think we're doing a good job. It made me feel very confident, very um, right about my decision to be at Swedish because I could have gone anywhere else and you know, it was just like, thank God I was at Swedish. There was no doubt in my mind. This whole project is about bridging the gap between discharging a patient from the hospital and the care that they will need later on. We know that our patients get world-class care in their delivery, and we give them world-class care in their baby in the hospital, but we know from our experience and from talking to our patients that there is a big gap between when we have this patient and baby leave the hospital and when they usually are able to see their provider, either an obstetrician, a midwife, family medicine doctor, or a pediatrician. There are a multitude of questions that a new mom and a new dad are going to have when they bring this tiny baby home from the hospital. And this is a place, a click, that they can go and, and seek help. We will have someone be able to help them find a pediatrician for them or a family medicine doctor who takes care of children for them. The other part of this clinic is going to be an oasis for these people to come back to. We are going to have a multitude of classes offered from how to feed your baby, how to do baby yoga, moms can have exercise classes there, parenting classes, grandparenting classes. This program will also be that, that link between the hospital and outside to help our pediatric population be able to find the care that they need. And I think that this is going to be a tremendous service to our patients to be able to not only get them into our system, to, but to get them around the system to find all the great care that we have.